we're going to talk about identity, uh, but maybe we should start by asking what the heck do we mean when we talk about identity? So can you talk just a little bit about uh, how well do you think people understand this concept of identity and identity resolution and identity management and how pervasively adopted is it now? Well, so for better or worse, um, so I'm Alison Metcalf, by the way, I'm the GM of LiveRamp TV, but I've, I've been at LiveRamp for six years. Um, so that means I've been talking about identity and thinking about identity for a very, very long time. Um, and actually the story is kind of interesting because when, when LiveRamp started seven or eight years ago, the problem we were trying to solve was actually, and I think about, because it was we were working very closely with MediaMath, I don't know if you were the CMO at the time, the client was the gap, and the issue was the gap wanted to be able to take behavior that happened in the real world, right? So this person bought maternity clothes at the Gap and then target them with baby clothes ads in the digital world. Yeah. And how can we solve that problem? Which is really just how can I take data that is tied and known to one identity that does not translate to a different to a different place. Yeah. So we started working on that problem. Then the answer kind of, we got pushed by certain clients that well, if you can go this way, if you can go offline to online and help me get this person or household to the digital world, can't you go the other way too? Like I wanna know if my investment online is, result, is resulting in offline purchases. So we started working on that problem. But again, the theme was the same, right? Behavior or information is happening in one, in one silo. How do we help it translate to the other? Um, we also constantly dealt with what you just talked about, which is kind of precision level, yep. right? So we work with data providers, brands, et cetera. And to, in certain campaigns we'd work on, they would, precision was incredibly important. I just want this person or devices attached to this person. But in other cases, it could be, no, I want as much scale about people that kind of look like this as possible. So set it at zip four. Um, so we've been working on that problem for a long time. I think that identity and connectivity has exploded in the last four or five years. Lots of different folks are talking about it in lots of different ways. Um, but for LiveRamp, it really is the core, the way we think about it, is being able to take, again, data that's tied to different IDs that cannot understand each other and break down those barriers so that they can be combined into one true sense of that person and or household or even zip for level entity. All right, so let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, uh, you know, we're talking about the, the new wave that Jim and I did on these uh, buy-side platforms for converged video management, and identity was a, a question that we asked a lot about but got like a deluge of information back on. Like it was an incredibly exciting and hot and rich topic for not all of the companies, but several, especially ones that were steeped in digital, mm -hmm. um, who I think maybe just thought that way. Right. So why does identity matter in when we're talking about you know, television and video? Well, I think the good news is for the exact same reason, right? Like from, and I don't, certainly don't mean to oversimplify, I'm not a career television person like a lot of you in this room, but when we started working on this problem of TV, we saw the challenges to be pretty darn similar to what we experienced in the digital offline digital world that we got in premium publishers in the same place. You have data tied to CTV IDs, you have data tied to a Comcast ID or a different kind of PII. You have, it's the same problems. We need to break down those silos, enable those data sets to be uh, joined together, commingled for every use case that is possible, right? I need to understand the universe for planning. I need to understand the use case for distribution to the platform where I want to target it. And then finally, I need to be able to, to take my sales data, whether that be tied to online information or offline, and combine that with my reach so I understand how I did. So are you the resolver? Are you the holder of the identity or the resolver of identity or disparate identities or both? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought, <laughs> yeah. that's what I thought you were gonna yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we used to talk about the, the concept of identity resolution a lot more um, when it was all about digital to offline because this was kind of like, how do I understand this anonymous person obviously not identifying that person or household, but understanding how to, create that behavior linkage together. Now it's expanded because we deal with a lot of offline to offline data too. It's not all. For example. Well, taking you know taking a third party data asset that could be rooted in offline data and then matching that against like the Comcast or Xander subscriber file and, pu and pushing it that way in a privacy compliant friendly way um, is, is really important too. So um, you started, and I remember when we were having these conversations, actually, Jim and I were having conversations with you guys, trying to help the uh, kind of programmers and MVPDs. You were really focusing on the sell side of the equation, if you will. Is that, you've expanded, yes? 
Yeah, we're absolutely. And so I because, think because we told you because to? you kind of made it clear. I do remember previewing things with Joanna and Jim, and, and it was so clear to me after a while the questions you were asking that were coming from the point of view of the buy side. And I was like, aha, I've got to think about this differently. Um, but I do think we're at this interesting point, and you've heard me talk about this before too, but I again, the history lesson that I'm kind of on here is what 2014, I don't remember when Facebook custom audiences first started, it was around there. We were right in the center of that too, right? And so when a brand wanted to start pushing data to Facebook or Twitter, insert any other premium publisher, there was a lot of sensitivity about, you mustn't tell them my match rate, you mustn't tell them how much data they can have, and so it, despite the automation that we had, we were precluded from making that information open and available to the buy side. So to your point, we have built, um, we have built a product specifically to help the sell side push audiences to their, to their platform, specifically MVPDs and networks. The now kind of last great divide for us is working with the sell side to get them comfortable to enable us to give that information to the buy side. Why, what, what are some of the concerns? It's the same as, I mean, that's the history lesson is the same. It's I'm so, I don't like the idea of people being able to, in, in essence, query my data. And I understand that, but but the, the kind of unintended negative consequence that's happening is, this is what my team tells me all the time, is they will they talk to, they, they go to a brand, and they evangelize advanced television, they evangelize ad addressable TV, et cetera. Um, and then the brand says, awesome, like I wanna know where my eyeballs are, and I wanna figure out how to figure this out, and it takes us months to answer those questions, dealing with the, you know, we have to get permission, and we have to work with, with each supplier, and that, that just elongates revenue opportunities for everybody and elongates performance for the brand. And so we're really trying very hard at this point. We actually have some headway. We've gotten a couple agencies that are uh, in a beta with our product, working with certain um, publishers and MVPDs to, to give them access. Are they, is there something specific about the kind of DNA of those buy side folks that they get this better? Or did you just wear them down? Or did they're like, big, you know, sell side compatriots say, this is an exciting opportunity for you. Like, where did it start? Yeah, well, I think, because we need more. I think that, that it's, it's, so again, it kind of, for us, from our point of view, which is, you know, which is our own live rent point of view, what's interesting is we would often go and talk to our clients and talk to expanding to TV, and they would say, great, what, what they are used to getting from us is what we call match report, which is like, cool, I'm gonna upload my CRM into live ramp, I'm curious about the trade desk, you know, and these data zoo, whatever, I'm curious about all these different destinations, and then I get this beautiful little report that just says, these are how many, how many devices I have at each place, and now I can make a decision, and off I go. And so they're, they're pushing us in that direction. Like, why, Ramp, why can't you just do this for TV too? Yeah. Um, and so it certainly helps when we go and talk to our buy, sell side clients when we say, we're getting a lot of pressure from insert massive advertiser that they want this information, can we, how can we help them? Are they asking for person, for household? For both? For both, yeah. I think um, obviously for for the MVPD that's much more household based, it depends on depends on the destination, which is kind of live ramp speak for end platform or media media seller um, platform. But one of the advantages that we do have is that we can toggle back and forth. So we are able to go to person to household to like I said, zip four in some cases and we can go we can go the other way too. Very briefly, how the F do you do that? It's the secret sauce. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> no, I mean it's. I mean it's our identity graph. The identity yeah. graph is. Is it, no, it's not secret. It's both totally transparent about that, right? So we have our offline database that is uh, rooted in Axiom's Abilitech, which is our former parent, no longer. That is right. Abilitech went with you. Abilitech went with us, um, and so we have this like best in class offline data asset that has all that linked together. That's constantly being refreshed and updated, and then we have our match network where we append um, you know devices and mobile IDs and now CTV IDs to that graph. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the fraught environment we're in right now around kind of the use of data, uh, consumer privacy concerns, um, you know, questions of kind of uh, permission around data. Like, how are you know you're you're in a very critical place, but sort of not seen by the consumer. Mm -hmm. How do you think as library? How do you think about this? question of how to kind of help inform something like tailoring and relevancy and personalization while balancing this desire that consumer have, consumers have for, I'm not even sure that it's necessarily privacy so much as control, but we could talk for that about that's that for hours. Yeah, that's a whole other, I mean, ultimately consumer privacy and protection is, is incredibly important to us. It's at the core of what we do. I don't even want to tell you the amount of money we spend in time and resources and our data ethics 
department at LiveRamp. Um, we do ultimately believe that a personalized world and a data-driven world is better for all, right? It's a better experience for consumers. It's a better, um, better ROI for our advertisers. Um, so we do spend a tremendous amount of time thinking about that. Um, we have various initiatives going on to give more consumers awareness of us and, our, and the role that we play. Um, CCPA is keeping us all very, very busy. It's super fun, as was GDPR. Um, but, but it's important, and I think that we all, we all have to accept that what sounds good for us as an industry doesn't always sound great to the consumer, even though we think it is better for them. Um, and so I think kind That's of like such a euphemistic way of describing how they feel about it. Yeah. It's just so, I mean, that's the thing, right? It's like, of course, it feels like the right thing to us. Right. Like, we feel good about what we're doing. Don't you want to get at You're going to have to get at Yeah, ads. no. Don't you want them to be relevant to right. you? Um, They're totally the freaked out they by say it. Yes, but yeah, it, it, it's, yeah. The, it, I think it is we've, the, we've, we've lost them somewhere along the way. We've got to get them back. I think that the reality is the creepiness factor um, is alive and well. People are darn convinced that Facebook and Instagram are listening to them. And, you know, I, the amount of times I hear my friends say to me, frankly, I got this ad. We were just talking about blue bottle coffee, and now I did. It's because of you, and you did this. Like, I didn't actually have anything to do you with that. You did this. I may have, but no. Um, it's just this concept of like it feels like it feels invasive. Yeah. I think. For How big a deal do you think that is in TV? Do you think because I think Jim and I, one of the things that we worry about for the entire industry is that we don't f up TV, sort of sight, sound, motion, premium qu con content, advertising experiences the way in many ways we have in digital advertising. Yeah, I, from from my point of view, I think that some of the immediacy of reaction to consumer behavior in the in the digital world is what freaks people out. Like, I just did this, and now this is happening, and mm. so I think that perhaps being mindful of that, over personalizing, saying, but that's it, right? Name. It's like actually being mindful of it, actually right. thinking about the strategy around it, rather than sort of hit the retarget button immediately. For and, example, and having and having empathy for the for the consumer experience. It's, it's hilarious to me though, as many as my friends and family gripe at me about you know, you made this ad pop on my face. I also get the same, like, I can't believe I'm still being targeted for these shoes that I already bought. Yeah. Um, and, like, I just, so so I think um, the, 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 the devil's in the details about how we disclose our methodology and how we are being being respectful and empathetic of the consumer experience while maintaining that we want to have, we want, we want them to have a good experience. I do hope we all talk more about this question, the sort of how we make the TV experience, sight, sound, motion, advertising, a good one in the face of all of these developments around data and technology and measurement, and don't fall into some of the traps uh, that we have in digital, uh, says the digital girl, you know, who's been in digital for 20 years. Thank you so much, Al. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Thanks. it.